Good evening, everyone. I'm Rob Caldwell, sitting in tonight for Pat Callahan. Forty-three years ago today, the United States dropped the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima. For many, that day brings back nightmares they would like to erase. But as News Center's Jan Fox reports tonight, some Mainers feel it is imperative to keep those memories alive. It was a burning commitment to peace that helped the Veterans for Peace and members of Portland Pox Christi brave the heat for their annual memorial to the bombing of Hiroshima. The service in Monument Square is testament to their vow of doing everything they can to keep the memory of Hiroshima alive. They say that remembering the devastation of a city, the killing of a culture and its people, will help us avert the same mistake in the future. One by one, the peace activists made their pleas. The killing that's going on everywhere, all over the wor world right now, in Central America, in the Middle East, in Africa, um, and in this country, it needs to end. I think that it would do us all good if um, every morning at 8.15, we sort of thought what would happen if that same thing happened in our town. Their ultimate hopes? To end this nation's spending on nuclear weapons, to convince government officials to stop testing those weapons, and to push our leaders forward on arms talks. They say this can be achieved only if we take time to remember the rubble and ruin of Hiroshima. I'm here to remember the victims. I, I too, am here to remember the victims who, at 8.15 in the morning, just disappeared. The people of Hiroshima have not forgotten either. Today, hundreds of them went to an old building blackened by war to mourn the loss of their loved ones. In Monument Square, Jan Fox, News Center. The Physicians for Social Responsibility will hold a 24-hour commemorative vigil this weekend on the steps of the State House in Augusta. It will last until tomorrow morning. To some, the bombing of Hiroshima will always be a black mark on American history, but at least one serviceman in the South Pacific at the time often wonders if he'd still be alive if the bomb hadn't been dropped. Charles Lachuto was a staff sergeant in the Air Force during World War II, stationed out of Marseille, France. He was in the Mediterranean on the SSC Robin when news of the bombing came. Well, personally, I believe that probably thousands and thousands of soldiers, sailors, marines would have died on, on, on the possibility of the invasion of Japan. I really, I really believe that. So, well, let's, let's start over here. As Lachuto looks over his ship's old newsletters, he says he will never forget how happy his shipmates were knowing they wouldn't have to storm Japan's beaches. As Shudo says, such devastation is difficult to see, but in that particular case, dropping was the right decision.